Larry Smith and Audrey Agonkri on Good Morning Washington for Good Morning Star. Tonight, this just in, the rare interview with President Trump. What he says about the economy, guns, and his response to this question. Are you a feminist? This as he prepares for his first State of the Union and why he's now taking on Jay-Z. Also breaking tonight, the flu shutting down even more schools. Children in parts of six states told to stay home. Health officials battling to stop the virus from spreading. Dr. Jen Ashton standing by. Deadly ambush, four people killed, one wounded at a car wash. Police say the gunman sat waiting with an AR-15 before opening fire. What the family of the victims is now revealing. Unusual punishment, the seven-year-old handcuffed at school, accused of attacking his teacher. Parents say the school went too far. And tax warning, new alerts tonight about possible tax scams, how to protect your refund, and why tomorrow may be the best time to file. From ABC News, this is ABC World News Tonight. And good evening. Thanks for joining us on this Sunday. I'm Tom Yamas, and we begin tonight with President Trump's rare interview, his first international TV interview since taking office, at the same time the president is battling new headlines over the Russia investigation. President Trump facing a critical week at the White House, his first State of the Union address on Tuesday, and he's selling his new immigration plan to critics in both parties. Tonight, new reports President Trump has Deputy Attorney General Rod Ronstein in his crosshairs after he considered firing special counsel Robert Mueller last June. ABC's David Wright leads us off. Mr. President. Tonight, a reunion between the former winner of The Celebrity Apprentice and his old boss, now the President of the United States. Let's go. Come on, Pierce. British journalist Piers Morgan presses Trump on a range of issues, from his views of women who have protested Trump's presidency in record numbers. Are you a feminist? No, I wouldn't say I'm a feminist. I mean, if I think that would be maybe going too far. I'm, I'm for women, I'm for men, I'm for everyone. To his refusal to endorse stronger gun control measures, even after the mass shooting in Las Vegas. If they had the bullets going in the opposite direction, you would have saved a lot of lives. So I get what you're saying, but I believe in the Second Amendment. Trump also takes credit for a booming economy. A lot of the global economy, Piers, is because of how well we're doing. You know, most people will admit that, but we are doing well. That's helping all around the globe. That's a good thing. The interview, downright chummy at times. One topic Morgan steers clear of is the ongoing Russia investigation. Today, the Washington Post reports Trump recently considered firing his deputy attorney general, the man who appointed the special counsel. This after reports confirmed by ABC News that Trump considered firing Bob Mueller, too. Some members of the president's party worry Trump may be flirting with an obstruction of justice charge. It's pretty clear to me that everybody in the White House knows it'd be the end of the President Trump's presidency if he fired Mr. Mueller. On Tuesday night, President Trump hits the reset button at his first State of the Union address. He's expected to make the case that the Trump economy has been good for all Americans. But that inclusive message won't erase his inflammatory rhetoric on issues of race and immigration. Overnight, rapper Jay-Z called the president out over reported comments suggesting, in harsh language, that African immigrants are undesirable. It's disappointing and it's hurtful. It really is hurtful, more so like looking down on the whole population. Today, Trump fired back on Twitter, somebody please inform Jay-Z that because of my policies, black unemployment has just been reported to be at the lowest rate ever recorded. And David Wright joins us live from the White House. And David, I want to go back to that Russia investigation. There's news tonight of a push to release a classified memo written by a Republican congressman that suggests bias at the FBI and a fight now brewing because the president wants it released? That's right, Tom. This is from the Washington Post story. Uh, it's a fight that would pit the president against his own Justice Department, uh, and it has to do with a memo, a controversial secret memo written by a congressional ally detailing allegations of bias among FBI investigators. The president wants that memo made public so that people can judge for themselves, but the Justice Department says that'd be totally reckless without a proper review. Tom? 
David Wright for us tonight. David, thank you. And a reminder, ABC News will have live coverage of President Trump's State of the Union address. George Stephanopoulos, David Muir, and myself joining the powerhouse political team. That's Tuesday at 9 p.m. right here on ABC. Next tonight, new developments in the deadly flu epidemic. Schools in several states will be closed tomorrow. 39 states now reporting high flu activity, and the CDC reporting at least 37 children have died because of the flu this season. Here's ABC's Ariel Reshef. Tonight, schools in at least six states closing in a desperate rush to stop the dangerous spread of the flu. The epidemic so severe in Oklahoma, 20 districts have shut their doors in the last week as they try to disinfect. We felt like at the end it was what was best for our kids and our school. In Jacksonville, Florida, the virus forcing bus drivers like Kelly Mead to stay home. Sending your kid with a fever, uh, especially a high fever, you're sending them on a bus with a bunch of kids, including a driver, and you're putting everybody else at risk. 39 states still reporting high flu activity, and experts say the season may not have reached its peak. The outbreak, the worst in nearly a decade, continuing to claim lives. 12-year-old Dylan Winnick laid to rest this weekend, one of at least 37 children whose life was cut short by the deadly H3N2 strain. And tonight, it's not just schools concerned. In Minnesota, where fans are already packing the streets ahead of the Super Bowl, staff and volunteers armed with disinfectant, sanitizing surfaces multiple times a day to try to keep crowds healthy. Tom, experts say the flu season can last all the way up until April. Doctors we talked to say they can't stress enough the flu shot is still the best way to protect yourself, and it's not too late. Tom? Ariel Reshef with how the epidemic is spreading tonight. I want to bring in ABC's chief medical editor, Dr. Jen Ashen. And Jen, you're living through this right now. Your daughter has the flu. Today you had to take her to the hospital. What were the signs you saw that you knew it was time to go to the ER? The two big things I think people should look for, inability to tolerate liquids by mouth, that was my daughter's case for almost a day, and difficulty breathing, so that's breathing at a rapid rate, not being able to take a full breath, or with an infant flaring around the nostrils. I also think parents should ask their child, do you feel the same, worse, or better? And over a three to seven day course of the flu, you should start to hear them say they're feeling better each day, not worse. Dr. Jen Ashton for us tonight. Dr. Jen, thanks so much. And we move on out of that deadly ambush in Pennsylvania. State police say four people were shot and killed at a car wash in a small town outside of Pittsburgh, a fifth victim surviving. Late today, police revealing the gunman, heavily armed with an assault weapon, was waiting to attack. Here's ABC Stephanie Ramos. There's no explanation for any of this. State police are investigating the death of four people after an ambush-style shooting early Sunday morning in western Pennsylvania. Just outside a self-serve car wash, police made the gruesome discovery, finding four people dead, all in their 20s. While shots were being fired, an adult female passenger in the rear seat of the pickup truck took cover in the truck. That woman hiding in the back seat of the truck managed to survive and only has minor injuries. Every single person there was kind-hearted. Police say the gunman is 28-year-old Timothy Smith. They say he parked on the side of the car wash waiting for the victims to arrive. Smith is said to have been armed with several weapons. Timothy Smith was wearing a body armor carrier without the ballistic panels inserted and had several magazines for the AR-15 and 9mm handgun. Officers continue to collect evidence from all vehicles found at the scene, trying to figure out what happened. <laughs> One of the victim's sisters spoke with ABC affiliate WTAE. I mean, now I can, I can see it. He has a very obsessive personality. Police say the shooter has a gunshot wound to the head and is not expected to survive. They believe it may have been self-inflicted, but are still investigating. Tom. Stephanie Ramos with the deadly attack tonight in Pennsylvania. All right, Stephanie, thank you. Next tonight, the image making headlines across the country. A seven year old boy arrested at school in Florida, taken away in handcuffs. The boy accused of attacking a teacher. His parents say police and the school went way too far. Here's ABC's Zachary Keish. Hi, Bobby. Tonight, new questions Hi, about this video. Did police go too far? That's a seven year old boy in handcuffs, police taking him into custody at school. I'm devastated. This is completely insane. It happened on Thursday in Miami when this first grader hit one of his school teachers at the Coral Way Center. The young man's mother was in the principal's office with her son when police took him away and put the cuffs on. This video was shot on her phone. 
No pasa nada, mi amor, ¿saben? The incident and response are raising lots of questions. Police took the boy for a non-voluntary psychiatric evaluation, legal in Florida. Excuse me, do you have any paperwork or anything you can say to me? Recently, a similar incident involving an autistic 10-year-old was caught on camera. In a statement, local police say the action on a student rarely happens, but was warranted to prevent his erratic and violent behavior from bringing further harm to others or himself. I know the, my kids made a mistake. But his parents say police were out of line, despite one previous outburst, describing their son as an excellent student who's won awards at school. Some reports say that bullying may have been behind the child's outburst. He's been given a standard 10-day suspension, and his parents haven't ruled out a lawsuit. Tom? Zachary Keish for us tonight. Zachary, thank you. We turn overseas now to Russia, an outrage over the arrest of President Vladimir Putin's biggest political rival. Opposition leader Alexei Navalny taken into custody during a protest in Moscow today. Navalny barred from running for president, calling for a boycott of the election in March as Putin seeks a fourth term. Our camera is showing how Putin's forces crack down on protesters. ABC's Dan Harris with the news coming in at this hour. In dramatic video tonight, you can see opposition leader Alexei Navalny arrested on the streets of Moscow while taking part in an anti-Putin rally. Hours earlier, police raided his group's offices, interrupting a newscast and arresting one of the anchors. Alexei Navalny has been called the man Vladimir Putin fears most. He's been banned from running in the upcoming presidential election after having spent years leading anti-Kremlin rallies, during which he's been publicly beaten and even once nearly blinded when someone sprayed green liquid in his face. We saw firsthand in October how the police in Putin's Russia handle protesters by wading into the crowd and even apparently sending in provocateurs. Is he trying to start a fight? This kind of thing in America, nobody bats an eye. People protest the government all the time. They have for years. Here it is a radical act. Tonight, Alexei Navalny, who police just released, is calling for a boycott of the March 18th presidential election. Hurrah! But with Vladimir Putin's popularity rate hovering around 80 percent, the outcome is all but certain. Dan Harris, ABC News, New York. We thank Dan for that report. An update tonight out of Afghanistan, the death toll rising and that ambulance bomb attack. Authorities now say at least 105 people were killed, 235 wounded in the blast in Kabul yesterday. The Taliban claiming responsibility for the attack in what's considered one of the most secure parts of the city. The bomb, the bomb comes one week after terrorists killed 22 people at the Intercontinental Hotel. Back here at home and flood concerns in the south, heavy rain from Florida to the Carolinas overnight. Streets in New Orleans, take a look at this, underwater this weekend, flooding threatening homes in Louisiana. Let's get right to meteorologist Amy Fries from our flagship station, WABC. Amy, welcome. Tom, it's been a real soaker for folks in the southeast, and the rain does continue right now. And folks who are trying to get a home uh, along 75 in Tampa are, are getting wet right now, and they're going to be dodging showers I-95 through the Carolinas all the way up the coastline. One to two inches of additional rain is expected here, so that eventually clears out. It also opens the door for this uh, pattern to turn much colder. Arctic air surging into the northeast for as much as 20 degrees colder tomorrow afternoon in New York, Boston, D.C. Look at about an inch of snow, too, by Tuesday. Big reminder, it is still winter, and of course, the complete opposite out west. Very serious situation here. We've had record warmth for Burbank and Long Beach, California today, but also the Santa Ana winds have kicked up and Malibu's had a 60 mile an hour wind. The fire danger is now at a critical level and there's no relief in sight despite this being the rain season. All right, we'll keep an eye on those fires out there. Thanks so much, Amy. One more weather headline tonight, the flood threat in Paris. The River Seine overflowing its banks, threatening homes, leaving streets underwater. About 1,500 people in and around the city evacuated. The lower level of the Louvre Museum remains closed. Flooding also shutting down some train service for days. The water expected to reach its peak late tonight or tomorrow. And still ahead here on World News Tonight this Sunday, smoke so heavy it could be seen on weather radar. Why fire officials are saying the fire at a waste and recycling plant could take days to put out. Plus, why you may want to file your taxes as early as tomorrow. How it may help prevent thieves from cashing in on your return. And in the 80s, they were co-stars on a popular TV show, Scott Baio and Nicole Eggert. What she says he did when she was underage. And his response tonight. We'll be right back. This is ABC World News Tonight, brought to you by Aleve. Patrick woke up with a sore back, but he's got...